cruising down the road in the old 69 the other day, and right when I got around my favorite taco stand, she just conked out, uh, started running a little freaky, ran great, blew a cloud bigger than normal, and then conked out and coasted into the taco stand there and picked up some tacos. So the bottom line is the truck wanted tacos, but after some troubleshooting, I'm getting some unstable fuel pressure at the filter head, so we're going to throw a fuel pump at it. Uh, it's either going to be air intrusion or the diaphragm and the fuel pump is going bad. Um, when those diaphragms do go bad, they can dump fuel straight into your crankcase, which can destroy your bearings by adding extra fuel to your oil, which is not what you want. Uh, so it's often a good idea to change your oil after you get a fuel pump failure. And then we're going to see if we've got some air intrusion. If we've got some air intrusion, we'll take a look at fixing that. But the first step here is just going to be a throw a fuel pump at it because it's good maintenance and cheap insurance when you've got a high mileage old engine. So uh, we're going to pull out the vacuum pump and disconnect the batteries and let's dive right into it. All right, we're going to go over our ingredients list here. We've got a new mechanical fuel pump. This is a Napa unit. If you're experienced with old gassers, this is basically the same widget. Uh, we got a gasket for that unit and we got a little bit of RTV just to put on that gasket. You don't need to go overboard on that stuff, just a little bit is going to get you through. We're also going to want to replace any rubber fuel lines and any hose clamps that look sketchy. The rubber fuel lines can add air into the system even if they're not actually leaking, so if they're looking a little crunchy, you definitely want to replace those. We'll pull those off and take a look at what size they are later. This rubber line here off the vacuum pump has something weird going on. Uh, it's got a joint going on right here, and it makes so much noise out of the leaks, I can hear it hissing at idle. So we're going to replace that unit. Alrighty, we got that unit out of there. Good deal. Alrighty, we can now see our fuel pump chilling down there. Next step is to pull the fuel lines off of that. Gonna want to make sure and use a 5 8 line wrench for that high pressure side up to the filter head. And then the other side should just be rubber. Okay, you're gonna get down there with your 5 8 line wrench. Get on the high pressure side that goes to the filter head. Just go ahead and take that unit loose. Be prepared for some fuel to come out of there and try and keep any dirt from getting into the line there. Now that I got that hard line there removed, it's going to be time to get under the rig and pull off that hose clamp. Alrighty, I've got the rubber line off of the pump here. See it right there? Got that line off the pump. I'm going to leave the line attached to the tank side here just while I work on it to keep getting any dirt in there because there's lots of dirt down here even though I just hit it with the pressure washer. You know how it goes. Now we've got some bolts holding the fuel pump on here so gonna go ahead and attack those now. Um, everything's covered in dirt so I'm actually gonna clean this a little bit before I get after it. We want to keep from getting any dirt inside the block there. The bolt that's on the back there is gonna be a little hard to get to. You can't really see it so definitely can't film pulling it out there but it's way back down there on the back side. If you need to know where it is, just look at the bolt holes on your new fuel pump and it should line up with where the old one's at. These are units are gonna have a 14 millimeter head. Um, I went ahead with the old trusty manual taker offer there just because I wanna make sure not over, put too much uh, torque into those bolts that go into the block there. It can be a little crusty. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that other one off now and then we should have our fuel pump free. Good times. Alrighty, got that second bolt off there. Ah, a little bit of crispy RTV action on the end of that bolt there. Somebody might have been in here before me. Crunchy. Oh, got the unit broke free there. Let's see if I can get that hard line out of the way and pull that out. Alrighty, got the old unit out here. I'm setting on the slip tank workbench here. Um, what I'm actually looking for is oil or fuel. I'm seeing a lot of oil back in there. Not really seeing any fuel. So I consider that a win because if the diaphragm had gone completely, then we'd be seeing fuel in here, which would mean fuel in the crankcase, which is not good. Oil in the crankcase, we like oil in the crankcase. As you can see, the little widget's designed to push down. That's why you've got to get it under that cam lobe. Very important to get it under that cam lobe so the widget can get pushed down. All right, you can see where the fuel pump mates to the block there. We need to clean off that mating surface real good. And we also need to keep anything from falling into that hole. So we're just going to stick a nice clean lint free rag in there uh, while we're working on that. That's a little dark in here, so I'm going to have to clean that and probably not going to get to film that, but 
Cleaning's not too difficult, y'all can handle that. All right, I've got the old fuel pump here, all nice and nasty, and then we have the new one, nice and clean here. The arms are slightly different, but according to research, the arm difference is okay, it doesn't matter, we've got a new gasket here. It's like I got two gaskets in case um, there's a spacer. I don't have a spacer on mine, so I think we're good to go. Um, this helpful little diagram here, you wanna make sure and get the arm underneath the cam. Uh, not above the cam. If you accidentally put it above the cam, then you can break the arm off and drop it in the oil pan. So we're going to be putting the arm under the cam. And according to some helpful input from the oil burners forum, the ticket to that is to stick it in at an angle and then bring it up just to make sure that you get it under the cam. Apparently about a 45 degree angle, so we're going to give that a go. You want to make sure and not wear gloves for the next part because you need to be super careful not to drop anything down into that oil pan. Because of the location, filming this is not going to be very easy. So we're going to go down, in, and up. That's it. We're just going to go down and in. Then we're going to carefully tighten those bolts up a bit and that should just uh, tighten up the tension on the spring there because it's not going to quite fit right because the spring is tensioned because the cam positioning. If it's really impossible, you can turn your motor over a little bit with nothing in the hole. You need to make sure that hole is completely clear before you turn your motor over and you want to make sure that nothing falls in that hole while you're doing that. So I want to be extra careful with that. Um, it looks like we're doing pretty good and we've got a cam in a nice position so I should be able to just slide this unit in there. Uh, filming that may not work out but I'll do my best to help you all follow along. Got the new unit on there. The bolt on the back was actually a little bit easier than the one on the front to be honest because this little lump right here makes it so no socket's gonna line up good. And there's not enough space to use a ratcheting uh, wrench so you're just gonna be sitting there with a wrench for a couple of minutes tightening that little unit up. Always a good time. Now let's check up some fuel lines. Okay, the hard line down there did not line up good, but because it's hard line, it's adjustable, so I adjusted it. Uh, getting it to line up was very difficult. Had to break this guy loose here at the top uh, just to get enough action on it to get it lined up. Because you know, if you've worked with those hard lines before, you know if they're not absolutely perfectly lined up, they're just not going in. So got that unit all down there, and that's just uh, you just want to make that one a bit snug, and then the bolts to the block there from the fuel pump to make them good and tight. I don't have a torque spec on that and I'm okay with that, but if you want one you can go ahead and Google that and put it in the comments for me. All right, we got some crispy new Gates 3 8 inch fuel line here, diesel rated. We're gonna run that into a diesel can, try and fire the unit off of that just in case we got some air intrusion issues upstream or something. Uh, just part of our troubleshooting process here. And we wanna make sure that we got some minty fresh hose clamps going on there. Now it's worth mentioning that if this does fire on this, it's not gonna work for very long because it's essentially just gonna return the entire can to the tank through the return system. Okay, you wanna make sure that you have your test fire equipment all set up. <clears throat> We're gonna be setting this unit up on the uh, 75 amp start just to give her as much juice as we can get. We're gonna turn the key to on so that the shut off solenoid engages and we get fuel through the injection pump and we're going to be using the old cruise control starter switch today. Make sure she's in neutral so you don't have a bit of excitement. Alrighty. Oh yeah, just hear that relay going to town there. That was a good time. Give her a break there. Check for some sauce. 
Oh, well, we got some air. The fuel pump's moving something. Oh man, she is cranking good. Bit more air, good deal. Whoa, we got some sauce. I went ahead and just cracked loose all of my injector lines here just to let some of that air out. Alrighty, we got a little bit of fuel coming out of all those cracked open injector lines and uh, so I went ahead and tightened those up and now we're gonna give her a send again. I had great air free pressure at the filter head and I just couldn't get the thing to start. It cranked and cranked and cranked and cranked and cranked and it absolutely would not start. But I had great pressure at the filter head, crack all my lines, I'd, I'd get them all nice and purged out and then I'd come back 15 minutes later and they all had air in them again. So I, what I ended up doing was just throwing some fuel line at the return line. I still needed to do a full kit but I wanted to find out if that was the problem so I just threw some fuel line at the lines and replaced all the bad return lines and it fired up immediately. Had to upgrade the old cruise control starter here. Got this fancy little trigger widget. Really helped a lot when I was bleeding those injectors. Gonna go ahead and fire up the unit here. So we got the fuel coming out of the can here just to make sure we got no extra air intrusion going on and whatnot. I'm gonna use the fancy new upgraded cruise control starter widget here and I'll give her a send. I cycled the glow plugs. Uh, got fully charged batteries on here. She's not too happy. I'm having some difficulties with my starter here. <laughs> All right, it's time to reinstall the vacuum pump here. I went ahead and cleaned up these two bolts and they look okay, so no need to replace those. Uh, one of them's got some damaged threads at the top and the other one's great. The damaged one's obviously going to go at the top in the slidey widget here. So just keep those the same and everybody should be happy. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. Um, you want to inspect your vacuum line while you've got this out. So you want to make sure to replace that with some heavy duty vacuum grade line, not just whatever you have lying around because you want to make sure it has that thicker, stiffer sidewall for all that vacuum pressure and doesn't compress because it's uh, running your brakes. Those are kind of important. So now we've got the rig running and uh, everything looks good fuel pump wise. We're going to stick this back in. Be careful not to drop anything in the hole on the vacuum pump there. I don't want to get any debris in that. I'm going to go ahead and hang it by the bolt with the damaged threads here at the top uh, just so it's easier to put that bottom one in. Now we've got the vacuum pump kind of dangling there by the top one. We're going to go ahead and install the lower one. If you don't have a brand new belt, now is the time to do that. Um, I replaced this belt last month, so no worries there. Got a little bit of tension on that belt there, not too much. Obviously you start it up and watch and see if it's all flippity floppity or squeaky. If it's flippity floppity or squeaky, you wanna go a little tighter. Uh, you just wanna kinda start out a little looser and it'll go a little tighter with the belts, you know. Otherwise you'll wear them out right away, stretch them immediately. And uh, obviously a new belt's gonna stretch over time, so you just watch them and they get squeaky or wiggly, you fix it. Not a big deal. All right. <clears throat> That's it for the vacuum pump. Uh, make sure to hook your vacuum booster line up there so your brakes are doing okay. 
Uh, don't forget to change your engine oil if you think there's diesel in it. If you think your pump diaphragm broke, or even if you think it didn't, uh, it's not worth ruining your engine oil first, so now's a good time for oil change. Well, aside from that starter maybe wanting to tap out on us at the end there, uh, the only unit's running pretty good, so I'd say we're ready to move on to the next battle, maybe a full return line kit or a upgraded starter. We'll see what happens. All right, I'll see you all in the next video.